Explain the foundations of how you can start doing practical things in FPGAs quick. And last week we showed pulse width modulating coming out of a chip. Now we need to get input into the chip. And one of the most important things that we need to, to do is debounce switch inputs. Like if you push a button, you know, it doesn't instantly turn on. There's minute amounts of scratching that happens in the uh, contact interface on a switch. And that translates to, to big spikes in the, uh, on the input pin when you're trying to read this with the FPGA. Now, similar things could be used for microcontrollers also. A lot of these things are very similar to microcontrollers. And there's a lot of ways to do debouncing, and this is one way I, li I like to do debouncing because it's fairly simple. So I'd, I'd like to show what bouncing and, and slow rise times looks like on an oscilloscope. So here I have my oscilloscope. It's set to a very slow refresh rate. You can see the, the update is, is going across it you know, once every three seconds or so. Now I have a button hooked up to this, and we're gonna we're gonna view what the button looks like electrically when we push it, and then I have my debounced circuit at the top. So we're gonna see what it looks like after we've successfully recovered the, the signal. So if I push the button, you can see that there's a very slow rise time and a very slow fall time on the signal, and on the the recovered signal, you can see it's a nice square wave without any glitching in here. If I would have just fed this signal directly into the FPGA, the top line would have had, at the clock frequency that I'm feeding into this, which is 32 megahertz, we would have seen thousands of little spikes um, being detected, which is not necessarily what you want to to have happen. For instance, if you have a counter, you want to count every time you push this button that you know you don't want a thousand counts every time you push the button because this this the, the switch contact isn't very good. So I'm going to switch cameras I'd like to show you how there's how one way you can debounce a, an input. So what we have here, I'm, I'm showing the input and I've drawn some pseudo bounces in here. We have a clock signal. It's running very fast relative to how fast the switch will transition. And you can see that some of the these little spikes are shorter than the the clock transition. That that means when you run it through a, a D flip flop, you know, almost everything that you're doing on FPGAs is going into D flip flops. Um, some of these are going to be missed, and some are going to be um, wrongly read because they happen just on the perfect edge to where the chip can't tell whether you intended this to be latched or recognized or not. So it's called a metastable um, situation. So here's a simple circuit that you can do that will um, debounce an input. A lot of times, especially when you're taking user input, you don't have to have extreme precision. For instance, the clock might be screaming along at 32 megahertz or 100 megahertz or 1000 megahertz. It doesn't matter. Um, human interfaces, you know, only operate in, you know, you can only move your finger so fast a couple times per second. So what you can do is you make a counter in your hardware that is counting. For instance, I'm showing it's counting from 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. Every, every time there's a clock pulse, it's counting up. And every time it counts up to, to 3, and that's the point where this 2-bit counter overflows and goes back to 0, I'm going to generate a pulse. And I'm going to get into showing how that's actually done in Verilog pretty soon. So that means that I'm slowing down this window that we're looking at the noise. So we can we can see here that you know a lot of spikes have happened in the time that this is counted zero one two three. The the idea is get it get the input sample rate down to what's reasonable for 
the interface that you're working with so you can miss these glitches. So the way that I've set this up is I have two D flip-flops. These are storage elements. Every clock cycle normally when they don't have an enable signal when they're just normal D flip-flops they're going to sample the data and on the next clock edge the data will be present on this node and then on the next clock it would be sampled here and it would be present on on this node. So within two clock cycles the data would have propagated clear through these two flip-flops and since this is happening so quickly you can actually be propagating these erroneous um, uh, triggers. So there's a type of flip-flop called an enable flip-flop and that is where we're sending this enable signal in. So in this instance um, I only drew this to four zero to three so that you know it fit on a piece of paper you would realistically want to have this count be much higher but every four clock cycles I sample um, this input pin right here and then the next on the very next clock cycle it's going to propagate to here and then it's going to wait a quite a ways and then it's going to sample again so this may be sitting at one and then this would sample and the one would propagate to here and then the sample on the pin would propagate forward it may be a zero so this may be a zero and this may be a one that might be our spikes that are happening up here and what I've done is I've tied an AND gate in here so the way an AND gate works is the two inputs need to be one before you get an output that is one so this guarantees that the the clock the input is stable for at least two clock cycles before you get a, a one out and for safety you can add more of these stages the more stages you add so you could put a three input AND gate here and you put another flip-flop in here it gives you more safety that um, there's no spikes that have slipped through your debounce circuit. So you just tune that for your circuit. You can actually, there's fancy algorithms. You can see how many million years between um, failures. And uh, no matter how much you debounce things, there's always a chance of a failure. Hey, and they're playing our song.